Tenant right advocates in New York City are pushing an eviction bill that would cause landlords to have to go to eviction court in order to justify rent increases of greater than 3%. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. It's really an update to a story that I've been covering for quite a while now, and it has to do with this so-called good cause eviction up in New York City, okay? Or actually, it's in New York State. What they're trying to do is they're trying to pass this law that makes it so that landlords would no longer be able to let a lease end, okay? If a tenant wants to stay, they've been paying on time, and you know they're following all the rules, they can stay as long as they want. Now, I know what people are thinking. They're like, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Well, there's a thousand good reasons why a landlord might just want to let that contract end at the term that was specified upon when they signed the lease, okay? And just as an example, and I've, I've mentioned this one before, let's say that I signed a lease with my tenant, right? And then the tenant, you know, I don't know this when I uh, when they uh, first agree to move in, but the tenant doesn't get along with my wife, maybe treats my wife with disrespect. And simply put, it doesn't matter how much you pay me. I don't want you as a customer if you treat my family, my wife in particular, with disrespect. So, yeah, I would not re want to renew the lease on you. I would not want to continue for you to be my customer. And I don't want to do business with you anymore. You should move along. That's just a, a small example. There's a thousand other, you you know, reasons less specific than that. But, you know, I, I, I like to use that example because if you and the tenant don't get along or if, you know, you have other needs for the property or if you just want to get that tenant up out of there without having to go to eviction court, well, you should have the right to do so. So <clears throat> the good cause eviction thing, it makes it so you have to go to housing court and prove exactly why you want to get the tenant up out of your property. And this basically makes it so that we end up with perpetual tenancies because housing court is backlogged already. Imagine all these people suddenly saying, hey, you know, um, I, I have a good reason to remove this tenant, but, uh, you know, I have to go through housing court. And it's going to take me an additional year to get them up out of there. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But this is the sort of thing that we're seeing up in New York State. OK, and now they've even tied rent control provisions into it. So. Imagine they say that, oh, well, if you want to raise the rent more than 3%, you have to go to housing court. You have to wait in that year-long line to go see a judge to prove that, and, you, and the burden of proof is on you, to prove that you need more than a 3% rent increase. And this does not apply just to large apartment complexes. If you own a single family home and you're renting it out, and keep in mind, this is not just New York City. We're talking about New York State here. So you could be in upstate New York in a much less expensive city such as Buffalo, right, where housing is much, much cheaper. And you, you own a single rental there, a single family house. And guess what? You got to abide by all this garbage, okay? You can't raise your rents more than 3% without going down to eviction court. You know, you can't, you can't let your lease terminate at the end of uh, the lease term that you agreed upon with the tenant. Nothing. OK, you're you're stuck in the same boat as all the people up in New York City. So, you know, I, 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 I it's frustrating. It's frustrating. OK, because simply put, these same laws, they're being pushed here in Nebraska, where I live, because they see the example in places like New York. And they're like, oh, if they're doing it, let's try it, too. Well, if it doesn't pass in New York, you know, then it probably won't pass here. That's the way I, I, I see it. But that's why we need to fight this sort of thing all throughout the country. You know, I'd love to if the Supreme Court would look at these laws and just dec declare them for what they are, which is unconstitutional. But before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you're up in New York right now, what are your opinions of this good cause eviction bill. Do you think this is gonna pass? Keep in mind, the real estate industry in New York is pretty powerful, but you know there's more voters who are tenants than there are landlords. So it's, it's a losing battle. You're, you're fighting a losing battle you know, when it comes to making sure that there aren't too many anti-landlord laws that are passed, okay? Now they say that this might get watered down and they talk about that a little bit in the article, but you know, who knows at this point what exactly is going to pass, what doesn't pass, if it comes up to a vote or not, okay? So anyway, let's get into the article and see what it says. <clears throat> 
This article is coming from cityandstateny.com, and it says, Housing activists balk at watered-down good cause eviction proposal. Governor Kathy Hochul could agree to a deal that differs significantly from the original bill. No matter what deal passes, this is a bad thing for landlords, okay? Like, they say, oh, well, see, the landlords, they want a little bit. No, everything about it, no matter if the, the cap is 3% or 5% or 10% or whatever, is bad for landlords. Everything about this bill is very anti-landlord and takes away our property rights. So no matter what, the tenants win. No matter what, even if it's watered down a little bit. So it, it boggles my mind that the tenant groups aren't happy. They're like, oh, we couldn't just you know, put all of them instantly out of business. Instead, it's going to take a couple of years, right? Anyway, let me get into it. With some lawmakers feeling bullish about the inclusion of good cause eviction in a housing deal, now there are concerns about what version of the bill will make it to the governor's desk. The one first introduced by Senator Julia Salazar and Assembly Member Pamela Hunter, or a different version that makes stark concessions to the real estate industry. Like any compromise, both sides might be a little unhappy with the final deal. The original good cause eviction legislation would prohibit eviction without a good reason and require landlords to justify rent increases above 3%. State Senator Deputy Majority Leader Michael Giannaris said it was likely that the bill would find its way into the budget. However, the sponsors themselves have differing views. Earlier this month, Hunter said it was unclear to her if it would pass based on the opposition in her chamber and the amount of lobbying against the bill. So you notice that this is coming up in a presidential election year, right? So there's going to be more voters who are going to go and see this on the ballot than there would be in, you know, an odd year. So that, that's what their hope is. They're, they're saying, OK, well, this can help us win re-election. This can, you know obviously face you know it, it's going to win the 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 popular majority vote okay but the real question is is this good for housing okay like let me ask you something the problem with housing in new york okay in new york city in particular we'll, we'll talk about new york city in particular is that there is a shortage okay there's a shortage of housing affordable housing in particular up in New York City. So what part of this bill, okay, what part of the bill that says that landlords can't end their tenancies and can't raise rent, what part of that actually helps more housing be built? I mean, because I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it anywhere in here. No more housing will be built because of this. In fact, this could actually cause there to be less housing. So if this causes there to be less housing, how exactly is this going to help anybody? I mean, really, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here and I ask this question all the time because I'm like, OK, we're passing this law. This will help make housing more affordable. And it won't do that because it can't create more housing. Instead, what we need to do is remove regulations, remove all these rules and laws and the stuff that's causing housing to be so expensive to build or so difficult to build that it's darn near impossible. And then we could see a ton of new units being brought up onto the market. And that and that alone is the only thing that's going to cause a significant decline in housing prices. OK, so, I mean, this is, you know, it's going to make the people who are living in the housing right now, they're going to be okay. But if anybody ever wants to move, if any new people want to move in, you know, they're screwed because they won't be able to find anywhere to live. Yeah, anyway, let me continue. The original good cause eviction, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a realist and I know how we work. And if I'm not hearing anything about rent cap, rent control, rent stabilization, we're really talking about housing stability. It's a concern for me, Hunter said. We've been having this conversation since 2019 and I've seen nothing being filled. Salazar has a different view and previously told city and state that negotiations were trending well, noting that compromises were inevitable. The New York Post also reported Monday that Governor Kathy Hochul was beginning to support the bill as part of a broader housing deal, but there would be there would also be tweaks, exemptions for luxury apartments, a 15 year exemption for new construction and a higher limit, roughly 10 percent 
on rent increases before a lawsuit could be triggered. So they're talking about that, like, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna exempt the luxury apartments. That completely screws over mom and pops, doesn't it? You know, like mom and pop landlords, they wouldn't be exempted. Okay, I mean, they didn't say nothing about exempting single family homes. Uh, they were, they're gonna exempt new construction. Well, that, that sucks when, you know, like if you're somebody like me, a small mom and pop landlord who owns several houses built like in the year 1900, okay, that, that's, that's not gonna help me at all. So yeah, you're, you're gonna give a bunch of breaks and uh, exemptions to you know the extremely wealthy people who are doing the development, and then the small mom and pop landlords are gonna be left trying to you know hold the bag and paying the price for this stupid legislation. Goodness, you know, like, here's my example on the 10% rent increase. If you haven't seen my other videos where I gave the, the example on the 10% on the rent increase, here it is once more, just so that you understand why 10% is a stupid cap as well, okay? So you're a small mom and pop landlord. You've owned your property for the last 20 years and you've kept the rent below market rate. The market rate in your city is $1,000 a month. Well, guess what? You're only charging $500 a month, half of what the market rate is. So you're like, oh man, you know, um, my expenses, they've gone up a lot. My insurance, my maintenance, everything has gone up and I need to raise my rent by 20% this year. Okay, so what is 20% of $500? Yeah, it's 100, 100 bucks, okay? So you're gonna raise your rent up to $600 a month, which by the way, is still $400 a month below the market rate. But the city comes at, nope, nope, you're under rent control. You cannot raise your rent that high. You are hurting the tenants. You are an evil person. You're a bad landlord. You cannot do that. That's what the city will tell you, okay? And that's why I say rent control doesn't work. These numbers, they don't work. They don't look at the individual, um, the way, what each individual landlord is going through. The only thing they do is they put this blanket number out there as though every single landlord is o sitting there and they'll overcharge people and they'll screw people over. And that's not the case. It's never been the case. And if you let the market dictate how much the rent is going to be, then things will work out better, but they just, they're too dumb to figure this stuff out. So anyway, I'm, I'm on a rant again. I don't support this good cause eviction bill. I think it's an absolute joke. I think that this nightmare garbage anti-property rights law needs to be tossed out. And you know what? I know I just, it, it pisses me off that they just keep bringing it up over and over and over again.